Although the variety and number of prey in Torres del Paine would lead you to think otherwise, there are very few carnivores here. Canids are very scarce in the South American forest world. However, two types of fox are to be found here, about which almost nothing is known in terms of their habits and biology. The red fox, which inhabits the high plateau up to an altitude of 4,000 meters, and this, the gray fox, which lives in the Patagonian savanna and desert. All nature in Torres del Baine is directly connected with the climate and the latter in turn with the layout of the Andean range. The water mass of the two oceans and the numerous Patagonian lakes play a moderating role and the climate ranging between temperate and cold suffers very low seasonal variations. The average annual temperature is 6.6 .6 degrees centigrade with maximum temperatures of 10 degrees centigrade and minimum temperatures of 2 degrees centigrade. There are strong winds for most of the year and snowfall and freezing occur indiscriminately from January to December. These climatic rigors raise no obstacles for Patagonian species, which are adapted to moderate cold and the winds called the Furious 50, in reference to their strength and level of latitude. The common Cauquen or Magellanic goose even reaches as far as the islands of Tierra del Fuego, located beyond the extremity of the southern peninsula. There are three species of Magellanic geese, of which the former is the most numerous. The Cauquen feeds on grass, which is why it is hunted out by Patagonian livestock farmers, who claim that six wild Magellanic geese can eat as much as a sheep, meaning that the large gaggles a competition for their flocks. Fortunately, they are protected in the park and only the red fox, certain birds of prey, and on rare occasions the puma can pose a threat. Mammals do not generally hunt the wild geese. The staple diet of the Patagonian puma is the guanaco, the wild llama. That of the red fox, also known as the athara fox or guarachain, being rabbits and hares, which could reach plague dimensions in the park if the foxes did not exist. The park's most typical image are the peaks of the Pine Massif, from which it gets its name. The massif is formed of the famous pillars and the Pine Horns, whose almost vertical faces attract climbers from all over the world, and in the case of Paine Grande, exceed 3,000 meters in height. However, if the representative image are the sheer pillars, the park's emblem is an animal closely associated with the footlands of the Massif. The guanaco is probably the most characteristic animal of Patagonia. Of the four South American camels, it is the most adaptable and can live from sea level up to a height of 4,000 meters. The relation between indigenous South American Indians and the camels dates back at least 4,500 years. It was a unilateral, close dependency, which is why the guanaco became a totemic animal. Until the first half of this century, guanacos were indispensable to the survival of the Patagonian Indians, who obtained flesh for eating, wool for clothing, and fibers for sewing.
In former times, Patagonia was inhabited by millions of guanacos until the arrival of the colonizers and their modern firearms. Once again, the indigenous animals were considered direct competition to the livestock introduced, and they were hunted down until their population was reduced to 150,000, the number currently estimated to exist today throughout the continent. There is a stable population of them in Torres del Baine. The young males congregate in herds of approximately 30 until the age of five, when they reach sexual maturity. At this moment, they separate from the group and seek their own territory and females and form a new family. <laughs> 